Ankylosing and spondylitis happens in about 1% of the general population. It's more common in people of Northern European descent. There aren't any controllable risk factors that we know of. In ankylosing spondylitis, there's a very, very strong genetic component. Many people with ankylosing spondylitis either have another family member with it, or they have another family member that has some kind of rheumatologic or autoimmune condition. There is a gene called HLA-B27, and it's the one associated with ankylosing spondylitis. Not everyone with that gene gets the disease, so there are some environmental factors we just I don't know enough about them yet to know. Ankylosing spondylitis is more common in men. Some studies even show that it's two times as common. It has an earlier onset. So most patients, the median age of diagnosis is in their mid 20s, but it can be diagnosed up to age around 40. Ankylosing spondylitis pain is worse with inactivity. So the person feels more stiffness and pain in the morning. And then as they move around, then they start to feel better. There aren't necessarily screenings. However, if the patient knows that they have a family history of it and they do feel symptoms such as low back pain, buttock pain, and it's gradual and they have stiffness, they should definitely be checked out by their physician. The diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis is what we call a clinical diagnosis based on symptoms. There is a blood test that can be done if the patient already has some of the symptoms. And then another very important component of the diagnosis is radiographic signs. So on x-rays, the patient may have um, some signs of inflammation in the pelvic joint called the sacroiliac joint. So definitely in patients that have a family history of ankylosing spondylitis or any rheumatologic condition, if they're having back or buttock pain, they should be checked out by a physician. 